ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أما بعد وقال الله تعالى في قرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كان الناس أمة واحدة فبعث الله النبيين مبشرين ومنذرين وأنزل معهم الكتاب بالحق ليحكم بين الناس فيما اختلفوا فيه وما اختلف فيه إلا الذين أوتوه من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات بغيا بينهم فهدى الله الذين آمنوا لما اختلفوا فيه من الحق بإذنه والله يهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم صدق الله العظيم Dear respectable brothers, sisters, sons and daughters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for another successful convention of the Islamic Circle of North America. This is all with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the dedication and sacrifice of Islamic workers and all our brothers and sisters from all over the country who came and joined us. We have heard very strong messages from our leaders, from our scholars, and just before me, we have heard the message of concern about the Islamophobia in this country and the challenges which the Muslim community faces here and what should be our response, what is our responsibility. But we all know that the challenges cannot be met without the unity in the United Muslim Ummah. And the only way which can bring people together, which have brought people together in the past and now, is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Islam. So I'd like to share with you what are the reasons that people, they develop these differences and divisions and how Islam and the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his time, he united the people who were divided and how it can again do the same thing today and till the time to come, till the day of judgment. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that the humanity started with unity. It is only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of everyone. And that is the source of the unity of the human beings. That our creator is only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second important reason for the unity is the common heritage. We have the same parents, no matter what language you speak, what color of the skin we may have. Our father is Adam alayhi salam and our mother is same, Hawa alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the ayat I recited from Surah Al-Baqarah, the current nasu ummatan wahida, the mankind was one single nation. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his anbiya alayhi salam to give them the the right guidance with the truth and the deen haq but then the people they differed they got divided and the reason was their excess their rebellion against 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the message of the Anbiya alayhi salam. In Surah Yunus, verse 19, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَمَا كَانَ النَّاسُ إِلَّا أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً فَاخْتَلَفُوا وَلَوْ لَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَقَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ لَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ فِي مَا فِيَ يَخْتَلِفُونَ The humankind, they were one ummah. And then they developed these differences. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decision have not been made, then the differences would have been settled between them. So this is the hikmah of Allah. This is the test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there are going to be differences and the people have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his guidance to get the unity back. So the word used in ayat is the baghi. It is the baghi of the rebellion, transgression, which brings the disunity. This rebellion could be based upon their beliefs and their interest, their selfishness, or the hypocrisy, are because of the arrogance based upon race, color, language, and tribal affiliation, and so on, or the greed for money. And other reasons could be like rea or boasting, boasting for what they are and what they have done. And there could be jealousy, prejudice based upon race, ethnicity, and the creed. So these are the reasons which lead on to division amongst the human beings. And we see the same thing amongst the Muslim Ummah. Based upon these reasons, people, they get divided into groups, into tribes, into nationalities. And we see the situation today that the society will live in. Even here, there is so much differences. There's so much division. According to a survey done by the USA Today, after the election of Trump, the nation is more divided than before. 52% respond, responders said that, that we are more divided today than we are united. And many of the scholars, they have written that this divide is getting worse. There are more differences. There's less tolerance. There is more rigid positioning of whether, the, whether it's the political parties, of whether these are individuals. And we have seen that, the demonstration in Charlottesville, North Carolina, where the white extremists, they came on one side showing their hatred against those who are non-whites. And then the demonstrators came against them, and there was a conflict going on. And these kind of things are happening in our country here because of the divide, because of the differences. After this last election, we have seen more prejudice. We have seen more bigotry against the minorities, particularly the Muslims, and we have seen the hate crimes increasing and happening every day. And we see that in the hand of the police, police brutality is being shown in different cities. And recently we have seen in Sacramento, and we have talked about that. All this is, has been ex exacerbated since the election because the, the, the leadership that we, ha we have it now, they, they are making statements which cause promotion of this kind of extremism, this kind of divide which was there. We, we had differences before. Since the beginning, there have been differences, but in those differences there was civility. There was a debate. People presented their arguments and after the debate and arguments, they came to a resolution. But now we see that there is so much extremism in this area. So this is what we see around us here. And a big challenge now for all the minorities, but particularly the Muslims, who are facing it every day in their jobs, in the streets, in the cities, and so on. And their lives are threatened. 
and their way of life, the, the, the right to worship the way they should worship is also being threatened. There are massages being attacked. So this is the kind of extremism that we are seeing here. But in this situation again, it is the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we must turn to the Quran and the Hidayah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that this looks like a threat, this looks like a great uh, a danger for, for the lives and the properties and the, and the way of worship of the minorities. But there is a tremendous opportunity for Islam and Muslims in this, in this time that we should share the beauty of Islam, which unites people, not only the Muslims. Islam unites all the nations, all the human beings, and connects them to the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we see in the life of, of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa that how in his time, when he came to Arabia, the society was bitterly divided into tribal system. And these tribes, they had hatred against each other. And they had, there was rampant racism in his time. And slavery was going on in his time. But then what happened when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, brought the message of Islam, that he transformed the society into a society of brothers and sisters who loved each other, who were one body like Bunyanu Marsus, the Quran calls us, a very strong body which stood together for one mission as the ibad of Allah, as the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to turn to the truth of Islam which brings us together and get away from those those elements which divide us, and particularly amongst the Muslim Ummah. The Prophet ﷺ, he brought this message of وَعَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا that you hold fast to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that rope of Allah is the Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah ﷺ. This is what the rope of Allah is. If we hold fast to that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his ni'mah, is his blessing upon us, as he reminds us in this ayah. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَاسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا You should remember the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and their blessing is Islam. The blessing is the rahmah of Allah, that he brought, he brings the hearts of the people together, and they become brothers and sisters as one family like they must be. And if they are divided, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is just like you are sitting on a pit of fire. Anytime you can fall and then, and then you'll be a history. You were at the pit of fire and he saved you from it. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains his verses to you so that you may be guided. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought the light of belief, the iman upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment. He made this iman very strong in the hearts of the believers. So this is the foundation of unity. If there is no iman, no faith in Allah and the day of judgment, then all these other elements, they come the greed, the hatred against others based upon color, race, and uh, money and material things. But when there is a faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when there's a faith that we have to face him on the day of judgment, then all these uh, satanic kind of elements, they go away. So then he brought the people who believe to the ibadah of Allah. He connected them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the prescription I'm talking to you, what brings the unity. Unless we take these steps, there cannot be a unity. There will be a division. So after the iman, iman bil lisan, bil qalb, 
that we express the iman from our mouth, and but it, sh it should be testified. Our heart should testify the truth of iman, the faith in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the Day of Judgment. Then we should engage in the ibadah of Allah. We should connect with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then the Prophet وسلم, he did tazkiyah, the purification of the souls, the minds, the thoughts of his followers. He removed the grudges and the feelings of hate against others. He created the feeling of love for everyone, whether somebody is a Muslim or a non-Muslim, even the animals. He brought the feeling of love, the forgiveness and kindness and he made it as a condition of the faith. He said, you cannot be a believer unless you love for your, for your neighbor what you love for yourself. So just imagine if there is a society, a city, or, or a locality where people love for others what they love for themselves. How much closeness, how much unity will there will be? And this is what we saw in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu So he promoted this love, equality, and, and the justice, the adl, amongst the people who believe upon him. And then he minimized the value of the material world and its pleasures. This is very, very important that the people consider the value of the, this material world much lower than the akhra. Give priority to the hereafter, that this is a temporary world. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, we are pleased with it. But then we should struggle and strive every day to build our akhara, which is the eternal life. So he let them look to the future of the paradise, the Jannah, and to work and strongly and hardly for that. And then he promoted peaceful relationships with the neighbors, with the, with the customers, everyone that you know or you don't know. That's why we give the message of peace, assalamu alaikum, our greeting is the message of peace. And in response, we give that same blessing, wa alaikum assalam, which is may peace be upon you. So this is the message of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to give peace to everyone. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not only convey the message, he exemplified this message in his everyday life, his seerah, his life history speaks loudly that he practiced what he preached. And this is what we need to do is to practice what we are saying. And I also like all of us to reflect upon the words of a great Muslim leader of North America. And that is Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz, the Malcolm X, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. We all know that he was wrapped up into racism in the beginning. But when he learned the true Islam and he went to Hajj, what did he say? This is this, a quote from him which is very commonly quoted and I like to remind ourselves. And this is the first hand experience of this great leader who goes and sees the true unity amongst all races of the world, all nationalities. He saw them at the time of Hajj or pilgrimage in Mecca. And these are the words that he said. He said there were tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They were of all colors, from blue-eyed blondes to black-skinned Africans. But we were all participating in the same ritual, displaying a spirit of unity and brotherhood. And he also said, during the past 11 days, and he's talking about the Hajj time, here in the Muslim world, I have eaten from the same plate, drunk from the same glass, and slept on the same rug while praying to the same God. Alhamdulillah, this our great leader, you know, he has explained the concept and the reality of unity which Islam brings firsthand when he saw it in the time of pilgrimage. And this is what Islam brings. 
to the humanity. This is the message of Islam. Oh, mankind, you are suffering. You are suffering because of the divisions of haves and have not. Those who are arrogant because of their race, because of their ethnicity, because of the power which they may have. But Islam is what brings you together. It binds the heart together. So turn to Islam, turn to your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will make your life, even on this planet Earth, very peaceful and very much enjoyable when there, there is brotherhood all over. So my brothers and sisters, in the closing, I would say that after listening to all these messages, we have listened, alhamdulillah, from our scholars and our teachers who have shown us the way, uh, the way of action, the way of iman and amal and ibadah, and be active, follow the path of activism which ICNA, the Islamic Circle of North America, is inviting all of us to be and join ICNA. And ICNA is the one you will find practicing the, the teaching of Islam, including the one I shared with you, to bring the people of all colors and races and languages together in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the service of our fellow human beings with love and kindness and concern so that we are successful in this dunya and the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help and guide us that we do our job, our duty in order to bring all the humanity together, not only in North America, but all over the globe, inshallah. Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.